Avoid getting stuck at math problem sums ever again. You can do that by knowing your math concepts. Welcome to the Practical Math channel. If it's your first time here and you want to learn math concepts that can help you solve problem sums easily, start now by subscribing and clicking on the bell button so that you won't miss anything. Hi everyone, I'm Teacher Elaine from Practical and today we are going to learn a math concept called the Assess and Shortage Math Concept okay? also known as the Gap and Difference Concept to some. Have you ever tried solving any Assess and Shortage problems before? Do you find it easy or hard? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear from you. So let's take a look at what we are going to cover in this video. First of all, we are going to look at how an Assess and Shortage question looks like and then we'll move on to solve an Assess and Shortage question True understanding, okay? So does this sound good to you? Let's get started. Take a look at this P5 math question. We have a guy named Ali who owns a few Nasioma stores. If he places five helpers in each store, he will have three extra workers who ends up being out of work. And if he places seven helpers in each store, he will end up needing another 25 helpers. So how many Nasioma stores does this guy own? Are you able to solve this? This, my friends, happens to be a classic example of an, an assess and shortage question. So some of you might be thinking, how do we know? Well, you'll notice that math questions that deal with assess and shortage concept will often provide us with two scenarios. And each scenario usually starts with an if. And that's why some people actually call this question the double if question too. It's just like you seeing a guy walking around with a yellow Pokemon and instead of calling him Ash, okay, you might decide to call him Guy with Yellow Pokemon. Okay? So anyway, let's try to find the two scenarios in this question. Do you remember which word we are supposed to look out for? If you say the word if, you are on the right track. Where's the word if? Can you find them? Ah, there they are. The first scenario that comes after the first if is this. When Ali decides to place 5 helpers in each store. And what about the second scenario? The second scenario comes after the next if, okay, where he places seven helpers in each store. And what's so special about these two scenarios? For questions that deal with excess and shortage, they usually result in three types of situations. The first kind is when the both conditions lead us to having too much of something, which happens to be an excess. And the second kind happens to be the other extreme, when both conditions lead us to having not enough of something. This means a shortage. And the third kind has some sort of a balance where one condition leads us to having an excess and the other leads us to having a shortage. Now think about this. What kind of situation do we have in this question? Let's see. In the first case, Ali has three extra workers. So that sounds like an excess. And in the second case, Ali is short of manpower, right? He needs more helpers. So that's a shortage. So if you say situation 3, you're more than correct. Give yourself a pat on the back. Now that we are clear about the question, the next question to ask would be, how do we solve it, right? Now here's a secret. The key to solving such questions is actually to think in terms of the quantity that is different between the two scenarios. Okay, And what do I mean by that? In each scenario, the number of helpers that Ali places in his store is different, correct? So this means that the thing that we will need to think about would be the number of helpers that Ali has, okay? And let's see how thinking about this can help us solve the question better. We'll start by looking at each scenario separately and then think in terms of the number of helpers that Ali has. In the first case, we know that if Ali places 5 helpers in each store, he will have 3 extra workers who are out of work. So what can we tell from that? The number of working helpers that Ali had would be equal to the number of stores times the number of helpers. Correct? Since we have no idea how many stores there are, let's let one unit represent the number of stores that Ali has. Okay? And from there, we'll be able to tell that the number of working helpers would be equal to one unit, okay, which is the number of stores that Ali has, times the number of helpers who are working at each store. Okay, which happens to be 5. So this gives us a value of 5 units. 
Now, if we were to think about the number of helpers that Ali has, is that all? No, right? Don't forget about his three extra helpers. So that makes the total number of helpers that he has five units plus three. So far, so good. Now, let's look at case two. This time round, he places seven helpers at each door, and by doing that, he will actually need another 25 helpers. So what can we tell? If we let one unit represent the total number of stores that Ali has, we can tell that the total number of helpers that he needed at the stores must be 1 unit times 7, correct? And this gives us 7 units. However, thinking about the actual number of helpers that he has, we know that he's short of 25 helpers. So this means that he doesn't really have 7 units of helpers. Instead, he has 25 less than 7 units. So his actual number of helpers would be 7 units minus 25. Are you okay? If you are falling, then congrats, because you are halfway done. Now that we have these two statements, what should we do? In case you are wondering, do you notice that the number of helpers is fixed? So let's make use of that. Since we know that no matter what happens, the number of workers don't really change. Okay, so the number of workers that Ali has must be the same in both cases. So that's why we can happily make these two statements the same by putting an equal sign in between. Now we know that 5 units plus 3 is equal to 7 units minus 25. Now look at this equation and think about what it means. If we were to translate it into a model, it will probably look something like this. So here we have 5 units and an additional 3 helpers. So this is in fact the same as having 7 units minus 25. I need you guys to look at the model and think about what you can tell. Okay, How does this actually help in solving our question? So from the model, we can actually tell that 2 units would be equal to 3 plus 25. Correct? So this gives us 28. And it's pretty simple to find 1 unit. Okay, we can do that by taking 28 divided by 2, and this gives us 14. So 14 represents 1 unit, and remember that 1 unit represents the total number of stores that he has. So what we are looking at is the answer. Now here's a challenge. Are you able to find the total number of helpers that Ali has? Check your answers with the comment below, okay? And let me know if you got it right. And that's all for today's video. So to recap, we have learned two things today. How to identify excess and shortage questions. And second, how to solve them. Okay? Congrats on learning something new. Now you can solve excess and shortage questions easily. If you're eager to test drive your new skills and learn how to apply the excess and shortage concept to other situations, do visit our website at practical.sg. I'll put the link in the description box below. Okay? Thank you for watching Practical Math. If you like this video and find it helpful, do like it or share it with your friends. If you are subscribing to our channel, don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you won't miss out whenever we upload new math videos. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.